Okay, so good morning, everyone. We're going to finish out our week this week with um, another way to make the hair straight. It's not chemical, but it is another another way to make uh, curly hair straight. Have you ever seen one of these before? Yeah? Okay, got a few thumbs up on these things. All right, this is known as a pressing comb. Right. As far as combs go, this thing is not light, right? This is brass. This is a brass comb with a wooden handle. Um, they, yeah, they're a little bit heavier, but they work, right? What you do with them is you use these ovens. You heat up the comb and you press it is what it's called. It's called pressing. So, um, or it could be called silking. That's another term for it. So press the hair with it and we make it straight. Now with the comb, it's not gonna make it straight. Well, it can, but it doesn't, it doesn't make it as straight as if you were, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Um, the comb itself, when you're coming through it, it's not like gonna give it a style per se. Um, what gives it the style is more of the, the iron that you use after you do the pressing. This right here is kind of a small oven. If you look at the, this comes out. If you look at the opening here, it's small, so it's one item at a time. They have larger ones where you can put two in here, but for this particular one, it's one at a time. This gets extremely, extremely hot. So keep it away from mirrors. I've seen mirrors crack because the back of this has been too close to the mirror, and I have seen mirrors crack. So you gotta keep it away from the mirror and be super careful because it gets like, uh, what does it say? 800, 825 degrees. When we're doing those flat irons at 450, this one gets to 825. So you could do some serious burning with this, not only hair, but also people, it's, you know, skin and stuff. So we have to be really careful with that. Um, so you, have you used it? So I know you said you've seen it before, but has anyone used it before? Yeah, and how did it how did it work for you when you were using it? Did you burn hair? Well, no, because we used the napkins to check if they were hot. Ah, so you did just the first it. time I did it did burn her hair. Yeah. Every time with someone's whole, whole smelled like oh yeah, stinks right? It smells like burn hair. Burn hair stains. Every time you, someone's using these in the school and you walk through, you can totally tell, oh, you're doing pressing today because it just, it smells because it always is a little bit too hot. So some of the safety things that you should always have nearby is a towel and some water because it, if it gets too hot, you can always spray it down because it's, it's brass and wood. So it's not like the water's going to hurt it. It's not plugged into the electrical socket. Now they do make some pressing combs that have cords attached to them that are electric like that, but um, I, they don't get up to 800 degrees. They'll only probably go to like the 400 something um, degrees. So they do have these. I was at McHenry Mansion doing a tour there. And when I went um, into one of the bedrooms, they have like this old fashioned, like a, a little candle type thing. And it had a, a wire kind of shelf on the top of it. And they happen to have one of these old fashioned looking Marcel irons sitting on top of the candle like this. Well, the candle wasn't lit, but it was sitting on top like this. And this is the way that people used to curl their hair way back when, get it wet or get it hot and then put it in your hair and like use it, you know, to curl your hair. So the story behind that was the granddaughter of John McHenry from McHenry Mansion was curling her hair with one of these and burnt herself. And then she ended up dying from the burns that she received from curling her hair. So I imagine when she burned herself, it got infected, you know, and the infection is what she couldn't fight off on her body and, and eventually killed her. They just said she got burned from curling her hair and that's how she died. So I'm guessing it's the infection that caused it because, you know, we don't die from a burn. Um, 
So, you know, these things get hot. On YouTube, if you watch some of the, the hair gone wrong type, you know, videos there. I don't know if we've all seen that girl who has that wand and she's wanding her hair around and she's doing a little tutorial and she goes like this and her whole hair, piece of hair, probably about that long, burned off of the scalp. Yeah, you've seen it, Ashley. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty funny. It was pretty popular for a while. I think a lot of people probably watched that one. I mean, it wasn't funny, but her reaction was like, oh my God. So her reaction was actually funny, but it's pretty traumatizing. My daughter burned her hair off like that one time with a flat iron. She put a flat iron right here on the side and went like that. And it broke off. It was about maybe an inch and a half long after it broke off because the flat iron was too hot and it just snapped her hair right off. So those, those types of things, um, yes, you do have to be careful, very careful with. So what you always want to have besides your towel and your, your water bottle nearby or some water, sometimes even a wet towel if it's going to be too hot, is a Sanex strip. Tie this around so that you can test the temperature. we will just put it across the top and you'll just test the temperature, you know, of this. Again, if it turns brown, it's too hot. You know, if it scorches this paper, this is too hot. So how do you cool it down? Well, you spray it with water. Now, I've seen people pick this up, take it out of the oven and go like this. Okay, we can use it. Are you crazy? Burn yourself? I've seen someone else put it up to their face like this and if they feel too much heat next to their face that they're not going to use it. That is crazy. Okay, that is not the way you do this. I could just, I go, haven't you ever burned yourself? And she goes, oh yeah, once or twice, but I learned not to get too close because I know where to hold it to tell if it's the right temperature. And I just think that that's insane. Um, that is not the way to do it. That's a good way to burn it. But remember now, not everyone's hair is the same. So someone's hair might take a little bit more heat than the next person's. But proper prep of the hair is really important too before you start to use one of these you can't just like grab it and start to use it so uh, what i have is what's her name her name is michelle i have michelle here um i sort of i didn't really wash her hair but i sort of sprayed it down i could just twist it put it in the dryer for a little bit it's pretty much dry i'm just gonna run the dryer through it with a little bit of product here and uh, try to get this looking straight. <laughs> I'll show you how this is going to work. I have my pressing oil, which I'm not going to use a lot of because I don't want it to get greasy or smoky. But this is a pressing oil. This is made by, oh, it's already like leaking on the side. This is made by K-Curl. Um, if you look at it, it looks oily. It's a very thick, like a thick paste here. And this is what I'm going to put in the hair before, but I'm not using a lot. Um, with this particular product, a little bit goes a long, long way. You don't need a lot of it. Um, sometimes I, I prefer the sprays because I don't really like to stick my fingers in these types of things, uh, which I'm not. I'm going to be sticking a spatula to get it out because you never stick your fingers inside of things like this because it contaminates them, right? Whatever's on your finger, the minute you touch it, you've just contaminated it. So we need to you know, be careful with that. That's why we use spatulas. So I'm going to use a spatula. Well, not really a spatula. I'm going to be using an end wrap. To get it out and then i'll just have it sitting on my end wrap so i can take my finger and dab it in and run it through the hair as i'm using the end wrap but i'll show you how i'm going to do that um then what i have if needed is i have some some serum just to kind of smooth it down towards the end if there's any more little flyaway hairs and things like that i, I didn't get a lot of products if this was a client that was coming in I would, you know, shampoo her hair, um, give her probably a conditioning treatment, you know, like a deeper type of a conditioning treatment because remember curly hair is always a little bit more dry than straight hair. So she would probably need a deep conditioning treatment. I wouldn't put a lot of heat to her hair with a blow dryer. I'd twist it up like I did, put her underneath the dryer until um, it was probably close to about 90% dry, 80% dry. And then I'm going to take my blow dryer and my comb attachment. 
on the end of my blow dryer and I'm just going to work this through the rest of her hair to just finish drying it and bring it down a little bit more. And then if it dries a little funny underneath the dryer, just have your spray bottle nearby and you can just kind of mist that down just to get that extra little belt out or something if it gets in there. And then we'll just proceed with the pressing itself. Um, this procedure, depending on the person's hair, it can take up to an hour. Maybe two, depending on how fast her hair dries and what type of style she wants it in afterwards. I'm just going to show you, demonstrate how to use iron and get with some big fancy stuff. But you guys can get the idea on how to use it. And then when we come back, you can, you can practice with it. So a few things about these combs that I want to show you is, okay, they both kind of look the same, right? But then if you look at the back right here, um, I don't know if you can tell on this one, it has like little ridges where this one's just a more of a, a smooth, straight comb. The difference in that is, is that these ridges back here are gonna give you like a harder press. You don't, you use the comb, but you flip it and you use the back of the comb to, to press it out with. So with these ridges right here, you're gonna get like what they call a, a hard, hard press, a harder press. Um, but I'll go through that when I demonstrate it. But those just know that there's two different cones that you can use for these ovens. When it comes to the irons, there's many different sizes. Some are hollow, some are solid. Um, the solid ones are a lot more heavy than the hollow ones, but they retain the heat and hold the heat a little bit better that they're solid through the, the middle here. Let's see, can you see that solid through the middle where this one is got like a little hole through the end there. So these ones are heavier to use. You do a lot of curling with this, you're going to get a lot of muscles in that one arm um, for the size of the Marcel irons. There's many different sizes. There's some that makes box curls and some that make Z curls and some that crimp and you know large small um there's just all different types here's a solid one that's a little bit smaller around in the diameter so let's see where's the camera there it is the curl there is going to be a little bit different there's also these little look how tiny that is that's kind of flat on the insides and so it's round on one side and flat on the other so you're going to get a really small small curl with this this is flat all the way through on the inside. So this is just for getting those little tiny hairs and just kind of straightening them, um, especially like around the neck or the edges. This is really good to get in there with those. But remember, there's no tip on these. So you're, it's all using your hands on how to flip and click and roll with these things because it makes a clicking noise. So, you know, you click them, you roll them, you click them open, you roll them again. This takes practice, okay? It takes a lot of practice to get these down. Um, I haven't done it for a while, so yeah, we'll see how much in practice I still am. Just want to make sure I get everyone down that just joined us. Phase one and. So is there any questions on these things? No? Okay. So the first thing I'm gonna do is plug in my oven. Make sure on the cord here, there's a little switch. Make sure it's on the on position. I'm on the off position now. So this particular one is green and white. So I know that the white means that it's on.
Okay, so as that's on, I'm going to go ahead and get my hair dryer out and get my um, attachment on it. I had to find the plugs around the room too. <laughs> So I took this down. I'm going to be using a very wide tooth comb just to run the blow dryer through the rest of it. I twisted it, I had pulled it up to try to get it all in the twist. So it kind of dried a little funny. So I'm just going to um, miss this and just kind of run my blow dryer through it and bring it back down. Oh, that was early for me to drop something. Okay, pick it up, put it over here in my soil container, sanitize my hands, get a new one. Ready to go. And when you put these combs in the oven, make sure you only go to the edge right here where this is at. People put them all the way back here. And I don't know if you can see this, but it's burned. All this is burned. If that part does not need to hit in the oven, it just needs to go to the, the edge of this, this metal piece here, maybe in the middle. This is brass, it's gonna heat all the way through pretty evenly, so we don't need to do all that in the oven. So, I'm just going to call this
starting to get hot. Okay, so I've got pretty much dry, I think. Feels dry. Yeah, it feels pretty dry. So I'm gonna get ready to do my, my pressing. Check the temperature of the stove. Yep, it's hot. All right, so I want to separate the front from the back of the side. So I'm just going to move the ears here. Uh, go from the back of the ear forward. Just kind of move that out of the way. Come back over here. Again, I'm going from the back of the ear forward. Move that out of the way. Okay, so I'm going to start at the bottom. So what I want to do is just section this off. I don't know, I guess she's cut her own hair because I don't know what kind of haircut this is at the bottom, but when I finish pressing, this is when I would cut it for sure before I would go to curl anything. And remember, uh, that's probably too thick. You want to keep them thinner depending on the thickness of the person's hair. She has sort of thick hair. So I'm going to just get my thin sections because you'll get a better job. The thinner the sections, the better you're going to get at it. So now when I take my comb out, I want to place this over the top of it and hold it there to make sure that it's not too hot. I didn't get any burn. I don't even think this is going to be hot. Oh, maybe. I wasn't even sure if that was hot enough. So as I come in with my comb, I'm going to start on the side. As I push this down, I'm going to flip it back toward the spine. It's now straightening the hair. Oh, I forgot to put my oil in it. That was... So instead of sticking my finger in this, I'm going to use a, an end paper and I'm going to just get some out here and set it on the table. So that now I can dab my fingers in that. So just get a little bit on your fingers, tip your tips, run it through the hair. Because remember, you don't want to get too much. It's going to get greasy and it's going to get smoky if you get too much. So as I take the comb out again, just hold it for a couple seconds and it's good. So I'm going to come in at the scalp. If I need to go up to the scalp and like bump it, I can use the back of this and just kind of go in and bump it at the scalp. Just kind of bring that down using the spine of this. I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to bring this back. I do once on top and once underneath. It's called a soft press. If I do it twice on top and twice on the bottom, that's known as a hard press. See, now I'm sort of just straighten that out. I'm going to go over to this one. This comb isn't quite hot enough yet. Put it back in here for a little while longer because it's not hot enough yet. Is there any um, questions so far? Is this something you would get if you like wanted your hair straight like temporarily and then and, and then like if so how often would you need to like okay do that? um yeah this is not a chemical this is just another way to straighten hair okay mm -hmm. so. 
it's usually done like in a shampoo, like you get a shampoo and you get a set, you know, and this is, um, it's called a press or silking. So it'll last until you shampoo your hair again. Okay. Okay. So you may have to do some type, you know, if you go to sleep and you wake up and it's kind of, you know, got bed head to it, you may need to touch it up in a couple of spots, but this will last from shampoo to shampoo. Okay. okay. So, um, most people that I know that get this done, some people wash their hair once a week, some people wash their hair twice a week. So, you know, they just make their appointment stand every two weeks or every week and then um, they'll come in and get shampoo, deep conditioning, uh, get their hair, you know, pressed and, and like curled or, you know, just straight or, you know, something, maybe a piece added in. And then they'll wear it like that until it's time to shampoo their hair again and then they'll come back in and get it done again. Okay. Um, one lady I know, she'll come in one week and she washes the shampoos her hair every week. So she'll come in one week and get this done. And then the next week when she shampoos it, she wears it natural. And then she'll come back in again and get this done again. So it just depends on the person, you know, <laughs> what they want. But I mean, when you're doing this and this process on someone, you're, it's, it's not like a $10 haircut, you know, this is something that takes it's going to take probably an hour, hour and a half, maybe two hours, depending on the person's hair. So you got to figure you need to be getting about, you know, 60 bucks or something like that for it just to um, offset the time and the, the, the supplies that you're going to be using. This is hot enough yet. Maybe. Feels a little warmer on the hair. Yeah, if you just go in and come out like this, it's not gonna do anything. You wanna get in and get the spine of that comb into the area and just bring it down, bring it the other way. And they have, you know, different size irons and they have different types of stoves too. So if this is something that, you know, you want to do, you should really do your research into which products, you know, are going to work best for you or your clients. So now as I drop down this next section, remember it's not going to give it a style. It's just going to straighten out, straighten it out so you can curl it or something. I know that there's flat irons and things like that now, you know, that haircut, that do the same thing, but sometimes you just get someone that has that really stubborn hair and they're just like, oh yeah, that doesn't work. I just need something hotter and this is it. So I'm just running the oil through so that it gets nice and uh, distributed on there. Or it's the spine of the comb or the back of the comb that does the straightening for you. And another good thing about this is, you know, sometimes at the scalp, you just can't get a flat iron close enough to get some of that, you know, out of the scalp. So some of the things that might work for you would be this. And you wouldn't really be pressing so much as you would be at the front of the scalp and just kind of combing through. Maybe using the back of this and just kind of bumping this out right at the scalp, right around the edges, just to kind of straighten some of this out or maybe at the part. Or remember it's hot, so you know you don't want to touch the skin, but that's one way to sort of get some of the, the scalp area a little bit more straight. Okay, so this is getting warmer now because that straightened out really well. Want to straighten your hair? No, you're going to melt it off. I might. <laughs> so I get a little bit more oil, run it through my fingers, and just run it through the hair. 
It's really easy with this oil, this particular type of oil. Too much. And then the hair gets greasy and it gets super smoky. As the girls who've done this in phase one know, right? How smoky? Claudia said earlier that it smelled really bad. Yeah, <laughs> it sure does. I'm trying not to make this place smell so bad today. A little bit much hair. I mean, you could put the oil in first and then, you know, go back through and section it out and straighten it. But I kind of think it's a little bit better to um, go section by section. It always makes this noise, but it doesn't make, the noise that it makes on a doll head is not the noise that it makes on a person. That's for sure. I think I'm failing on the smell. I was trying not to make it smell, but I think I'm failing on that. I actually didn't smell. I in, so. Oh, Miss Sue said she didn't smell until she walked in here, so I guess I'm not failing too bad. That has a little bit too much kink there towards the scalp, so I'm going to move that one out of the way. I just want to make sure that there's no hair either in your comb when you go to put it back into the oven because the little hairs will burn off inside your oven and then it just looks dirty because you see all these little burnt hairs in there and it smells. <laughs> See, this one's just smoking, it's too hot. Yeah, see how that's like steam coming off of there? That's probably just a little bit too hot. Three, what? Yeah, we're on three two this week. It kind of turned out a little bit brown, so I've decided that that's just a little bit too hot. I'll put it over here on my towel, let that cool off a little bit, and then maybe spray it with some water just to kind of cool it down. sizzling. So then I can come over here and retest it again now that I've sprayed it with some water. Let's see if it turned it. So it didn't turn it now, so it's okay. But you should always have your towel sort of um, wet or water nearby just in case that happens. Can you see the steam coming off the hair? Okay.
This girl definitely needs a deep conditioning treatment and a haircut. If you have a hard time getting a piece, just come back in and take a smaller section. I use my fingers a lot when I'm sectioning. Or if it still doesn't work, make sure you're using the back of the comb, feeding the hair through it. Much better. My fingers are going to be really greasy. <laughs> it always seems like this stuff is so greasy that it takes me a couple of times of uh, washing my hands to get it all off. Okay, so that one I put back in there for a little while and I pretty much can tell it's really hot because then it's turning this a little brown. So, uh, spray my towel, spray my iron. Retest it. Remember, these ovens can get up to 825 degrees. That's hot. Make sure your towel stays wet too, because you burn your towel. <laughs> I've seen that happen before. They're all coming to see it all smells now. Well, what is she doing? I didn't get food. Oh, you came to get food, didn't come to smell? And I wouldn't recommend doing this without some kind of product in the hair because it does dry the hair out a little bit more. It's heat, right? 
So if I was just to come through here now on this top, coming it down. Get my bird side down. I'm gonna burn your hair. Next Don't person. Next person that walks through here and says, I'm burning something, I'm gonna okay. something. watch. <laughs> See me walk around with the pressing irons in my hand. <laughs> well, that's your tool. <laughs> you know what I was going to do, right? Mm -hmm. And then they tell me it burns. <laughs> Should be that fan that's in there because it's in there hot. <laughs> So there's, you know, the back that's pressed now compared to the side that's not. Can you tell the difference? Yeah. Okay. So like this isn't, you know, I mean, no one's going to walk around with the style, especially with the haircut like that. So <laughs> um, after you get it pressed, this is where you would go ahead and uh, cut it. So I'll show you a little bit of difference with flat iron versus the pressing one. So now I'm going to turn the flat iron temperature up a little bit more. ovens are so hot too you could just feel the heat coming off of them because you know they're getting 800 degrees Any questions? Straighten that out a little bit more so on the top, because I think that those work better on the top than a flat iron could. But if I'm going to try to like, straighten this out with a flat iron,
Again, you want to test your flat iron, right? You want to make sure your flat iron's not too hot, so test it on the paper here. My light's still red, that way I know it's not ready. <laughs> No, not really. So, flat straightening with a flat iron. You kind of bump it up to the scalp and then bring it down. Both work. It just doesn't seem like it's getting it as straight as especially at the scalp it just doesn't seem like it gets it as straight Some people, when they want their hair done with the flat iron too, they want to feel that heat of the scalp. You feel like, oh my gosh, I'm so close to the scalp, like I'm burning the heck out of them. But they're like, no, if you don't feel the heat of the scalp, the scalp isn't going to get straight. And they also have smaller flat irons too. They, um, they're like half an inch instead of an inch like this. And they're shorter, so they're sometimes they're a little bit easier to get towards the scalp with. And if you're just having a really hard time getting there, just take a thinner section. That's too much hair, but I'm trying to like demo it real quick and get this straight so I can show you a haircut and we'll come back from break.
to see me with the flower. I'm not trying to do any kind of style. I'm just trying to straighten it out. And that's the whole purpose of just straightening so that you can do a style after you get it. All right, so why don't you guys go ahead, come back at 11.10, and I'll have this finished by then, and then I can show you a haircut. Good morning. Good morning, we are back now. So here she is um, with her straightened hair and her very strange, Perfect. We're just going to say that she tried to do it herself at home, and these are, this is what she got. So, I think she needs a trim. Yeah, she does badly. So, <laughs> what I'm going to do is give her a trim, but I see all these like little broken hairs out through here. If I pull this out, I see lots of different links and kind of some different broken hair. So, what I'll show you guys today, which um, to give her a trim, so I'll do like a solid form around the bottom, and then I'll do like some invisible layers through the inside so you won't see the cut with the layers. And this type of haircut is really good for someone who's trying to let their hair grow, um, but they have some breakage like she does, and it just, um, it's going to look so much better. So take a good look at what this looks like, okay? Just remember, take a good look at this. This hair, all these little like frizzy flyaway things right in here. Get out of the way so you can see what that looks like. Just take a look at all that as we go around. So the first thing I want to do is the solid form. So what I'm going to do is section the hair from behind the ear. So I'm going to go from the apex, center part to the apex. From the apex, I'm going to go to behind the ear on both sides. So just kind of section that out of my way. And then the same thing on this side. Now, when you go to part, if you put your if your right hand, I'm, I'm right handed, so I'm going to say everything from a right handed point of view. If I take my left hand and I touch the top of the ear right here with my finger, and I come from the top of the apex down, I'm going to get a straight part because my fingers are always going to find each other. So you want to make sure that from the top up here, you're pretty much even going across the top of the head, which I am. So I'm just going to kind of leave it at that. And then I'm going to come to the back and I'm going to section this off about an inch from the nape. I'll drop this down going all the way across. And I am going to do this with her head tilted forward just because I wanted to kind of bevel under a little bit because our hair is so coarse that I don't want it to like stick out at the end. I want it to kind of just bevel under a little bit. So I'm going to do this with her head down, in the down position in the back. So this is still kind of sticking up a little bit. So I'm just going to come back in with my flat iron and give it another another go over. It may just always be sticking up, so maybe the way it's uh, sewn in, maybe. So bring it down. All right, so to pick up my shears, I'm gonna start in the center, making sure that my weight is distributed evenly, um, kind of stand with my feet right about hip width, hip width apart. My elbows are gonna be tucked into the side. When I lift them, I'm gonna make sure that my elbows are all in the same position. So I'm gonna start in the center, and I'm gonna come this straight down, take about half an inch off. And I'm gonna move, since I can't move my body, I'll move the doll where I'm standing right in front of it, I'm gonna be looking at the hairline on this side, how this comes straight down and make sure that this hair is lined up with the hairline. I'm gonna take another half an inch off of that. Move over to this side and do the same thing. Make sure my hairline is lined up. 
Make sure you're standing in front of it. What we have a tendency to do is stand in one spot. When we get to the right side, it's really easy to cut because that's like our dominant side. But when we get to the left side, we don't move. We just kind of like hip check. And what ends up happening is we grab this hair from the left and we end up pulling it back towards the center and it gets longer. So we want to make sure that our hair stays at the same length all the way across. And then check it. Don't move on until you've checked this and you're like, okay, that's the right length. Because you get the whole haircut done, all of a sudden you're like, ooh, I'm off about half an inch somewhere. How are you going to go back and find that? It is a total pain. So by checking it before you move on, much better. Okay. So same thing. Start in the center. Not quite half an inch here because, you know, she gave herself a haircut at home. Up to the left side. Move to this left side, or right side, left side, right side. I get my right and left mixed up a lot. I don't know the difference. Making sure that you have even tension on this hair as you're pulling it down. Okay, move to my next portion, which I know that this hair is broken, so I don't have to worry about it. I can drop it all down at one time. We'll just do the same thing. Take this off. Remember, never cutting past your second knuckle because you will cut yourself. How many of you cut yourself yet? I cut myself all the time. Glad you've cut yourself before. Yeah. Ashley, Leslie, all of you that I know that are cutting hair right now, we've all cut ourselves, I'm sure. And those of you that haven't cut hair yet, you will. I literally just cut myself like two days ago. See? You want to see? It's already cutting. I believe you. I'm not flipping off. But... I believe you. It actually hurt it. Yeah. Well, you're cutting yourself. Hello? Cuts don't feel good. Okay. So now when I get to the front, I think I'll give her like a little A-line where it gets just, well, let's see how much hair she has first. Yeah, no, that's not going to work. Okay. So when I get to the front, I'm going to come straight down, like her shoulders right here. I'm using that shoulder as a, a, a focal point or a point of interest here. I'm going to be bringing this straight down over her shoulder and just cutting it even with the other side or with the back. So I'm going from the back to the front. When I get to this side, I'm going to do the same thing. It comes straight down, and I'm going to go from the back where I have my link there to the front. Never cutting past your second knuckle because that's where you always inevitably end up cutting yourself. Right in that nice little fleshy part in here doesn't feel very good. And then I'm going to come to the front, and I'm going to check this and make sure that it's even, but it's probably not because it looks like one side is longer than the other. Yeah, just a little bit over here. And this is where my heavy side of my part is. So I have it just a little bit longer right here in the front. So I'll go ahead and take that off. This is called a blunt cut, right? Yeah, or a solid form. Okay. Uh, yeah, and it is because it's just like straight and blunt across the back, right? So that's why they call it that, or solid form. Okay, so now what I want to do is put these layers in because I want to help remove some of this damaged hair that's to the center, but I don't want it to look like I have layer, 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 layer. I want it to keep the illusion of the solid form, but remove this. Like I said before, this is super good for people who want to grow their hair out, but have you know damage to it and need to get that stuff cut off, but don't really want to put layers in their hair. This is what you do. So I'm going to come in the front and on a vertical parting, I'm going to take about a half an inch. Okay. I'm going to move all this back out of my way. And as I grab this hair, I'm going to comb it up. Let's see, can you see? Lift that up. I'm going to comb it up, I stand behind it. I'm going to lift it up. Let's see, here's the length that I just cut. So I'm going to let that fall out. And when I'm up here like this now, I'm going to make a fist. See all this hair that's sticking up right here? I'm going to go around in a circle, almost like a notching motion, and cut that hair off. As I drop this down now, still going to keep my length, 
but it's going to cut the in interior and you're not going to be able to notice the layers. So again, I'm going to come in, bring it straight up, let that last little length fall out, make a fist, and just kind of notch it from the shorter layer. Longer layer here on the top. Do uh, when you pull it out, see that's that's the length, right? That's what we've already cut. So we know that that's not all. I don't want to call that is not. When we dropped the sides. We dropped like this hair right here, right? So we want to make sure that when we're back in here, that we're dropping the same amount of hair. So they bring it up, it's still going to come down to here, but that's still my solid form. So I have this, make a fist, notch that right off. See, I still have my solid form. Um, we do one more and then I think you can tell the difference. Come back down here. There's, there's my length now that's falling out. So as I come up, I make my fist. Okay, so here's the side that we've cut. Here's the stuff that we still have left. Can you see the difference? I don't know if you can tell on this. It seems kind of dark to me. Yeah, uh, no, maybe? Sort of? Yeah? Okay, kind of. Okay, well, remember what all this looks like, right? Look at all this, and then when I get done, I'm going to do that again, and then you remember what that hair looks like when we're done. So, when we're back here in the, the crown area, we're going to take pivotal partings, which means all my parting is going to come here, because this is wider. If I keep going in vertical, I'm going to end up with a really awkward space on my left side. So I want to make sure that I take my pivotal partings right off of that part. Notice I'm moving too. I'm not staying in one spot. I'm moving around this head. Hey, Connie, have you gotten your shears sharpened? No, but I need to. I need to too, but I don't know if that spot's open up in Modesto. Um, it should be open. Give them a call. It's called uh, Kelly's Cutlery on Palando. Kelly's. Okay. Okay, now look, I cut the back before, now look at it. There should be a difference there. Now, I don't like going all the way around like this, because by the time I'm in the front here, I feel like I'm all contorted and twisted. So I just start over here on this other side and do the same thing. I knew how much I dropped on the other side, and if I'm not sure, I'm gonna pick up a small piece here and use that as one of my guides. And then I can just cut this off too. Put a small piece.
Okay, so I want to check my haircut, right? So as I come up here, I'm just going to pick all this up and make sure I go down the party. Just make sure I don't have any really long pieces left. Sanitize. Um, Put it in your solid container, sanitize your hands, get another comb. Okay. I almost did it again. I caught it though. All right, so I'm ready to move to the front. Well, I just want to check my links back here and make sure they're even too. Pretty sure they are. If it was a, a, you know, I would double double check, but I'm pretty sure that I'm good here. So now when I come to the front, I don't just want to leave these kind of scraggly lines of hair. So I just want to come back through and I'm going to do some more notch cutting because see that's a little bit longer there than the other one. So I just want to come in and kind of notch this out and make sure that it's all even. kind of pull it to her nose. So I'm, I'm going at this type of an angle from like the nose to the neckline, like that. So when I comb this hair forward, that's all I'm going to, to make sure that I don't have any longer pieces and I don't want to cut that corner here off. I just want to check right in through here. So just using my nose. And the same thing on the other side. I'm going from the nose to the neckline on this type of an angle. So it's just a little bit opposite now because on the other one I went up with my fingers. Now I have to go, um, or I went down with my fingers. Now I have to go up, but I need to make sure I'm using the nose. The hardest part in this is making sure when you're on one side and your fingers are this way and your other side, your fingers are this way, that you have the same angle on both sides. That's the hardest part. Because when you're one side, you just want to kind of keep it straight across where the other side has an angle. And then you end up with a mullet. Okay, so now I have this cut. Now we're ready to put the finishing touches on her. Let's soup this up real quick. I got hair way over there. Okay, so now we're ready to do the finishing touches, which would be to like re flat iron it because we've cut it and messed it all up. So now that I'm going to come in again with my flat iron, get it separating the sides from the back. This one should go a little bit quicker because the hair is already straight. But I'm just going to kind of bump it under. So, put my flat iron in. That under. And once you do that, you can go like this and you're really checking your haircut to make sure that you have it even. This is a great way after a haircut to check it. I go again using my fingers instead of the comb, and I'm wondering why. Oh, it's hot.
just going through and like thinking, okay, go over this one spot again. I get it really smooth. Almost done with the back. You're really going to be able to tell the difference from when we first started. But I need to put this down. I'm reaching way too high. It kind of hurts. Everyone remember what the back looked like when we first started? Choppy. But before we even did the press on it, you guys remember what that looked like?
Is there any questions? Talk to me, somebody. Don't even ask me questions, just talk. Is your lunch in the fridge? And if so, what'd you bring? Uh, no, my lunch is in the office. And I have some chicken and lettuce and tomatoes and not a salad. I was going to make a wrap out of it with the lettuce. <laughs> nice what are, you, what are you having for lunch um i don't know everything's pretty much closed so <laughs> i know i like how when you strain it like that in the beginning the what or like when you strain it like that in the beginning when you have like when you like ring it yeah. Like, cause, cause I, I wouldn't do that, and I would like just straighten it, and it would leave a line, a line of indentation, and I'd be like, "What the hell?" Yeah, no. Ms. The reason Ms. Michelle saw Miss Michelle saw me do it like that, and she was like, "No, that's not how you do it." <laughs> yeah. That's funny. When I worked with her, she taught me a lot. In the shop. I mean, I work with her here, but when I worked with her in the shop, she taught me a lot. Oh, that's right. You guys don't work with each other. She don't work there anymore, huh? Right. Uh -huh. I was like, why isn't my flat iron working? I must have turned it off because it just seemed like it wasn't hot enough. So I'll have to give it a couple seconds to warm up because I was like, why is it not doing what I want it to do? And then I looked and the power was off. And you know, the good tools, I mean, they make the difference. Right, they make the difference in what you're doing. If you don't have good tools, you're not gonna get the results that you want. Or if you don't have the tool to do what you wanna do, you're not gonna get the results with something else. So good tools really make a difference. Yes, yeah, so that's heating back up so much better. <laughs> okay, come back over here. It just wasn't hot enough. This. Okay, and then we get this side. So I actually know a couple of guys who use a flat iron to straighten out their beard. Any, any of you guys ever done that with a beard? Not only the men on here, but any women ever straightened out a beard with a flat iron? No, I haven't done it, but I know someone who now, I know someone who does it actually. This beard's long, but it's curly, so he straightens it to make it longer. Sometimes he's even had a, a braid in his beard. Beard competitions? Um, they do that in competitions, oh yeah. There's a few beard competitions around. Well, probably not now, but there was. Still probably are, just underground. Maybe it's all virtual.
Oh, almost. I'm just going to go with the top a little bit more when I get to the crown area, just because there was some partings that I wasn't sure about where to put the hair. So I just kind of left it. So I'm just going to incorporate it in with these other pieces here. It will look better over there, or would it look better over here? And I think it looks better coming over here. Except for this little bit in the front here, might be how they sewn this doll head in because I even took the comb to those um, around the hairline when we were on break and tried to brush all that out and I could not get that bump out. <laughs> The front hair is going to go back with it a little bit, give her a little bit of curl here in the front bang area. See the back? Can you tell the difference now? How's it look? Better? Worse? She's ready to get a new man. So now this will stay till you wash a bit. Look at the difference in the back. Remember how frizzy and crazy that looked in the back? Now it's like a lot smoother and straighter and the frizzies are gone and she still looks like she has a bob and Believe me, if you can make a doll head look good, you have no problem with people. This is, uh, needs more of that part is just right there in the center. But that's how you use pressing combs and that's how you do invisible layered haircuts and flat irons and everything else. Now you could, I mean, if this was finished, we could go through and put, um, Serum, hairspray, whatever else that your client would need, you could put that on there and finish them up. So, any questions, comments? Taper her. Taper? Uh huh. Taper her in the back. Oh, hey, Miss Sue. Not the way these are sewn in, no. The way that these are sewn in, you cannot cut them. Give her a design, Miss Connie. The what ribbon? Give her a design. Yeah, oh, come on, Master Barber. Not on this hair. <laughs> no. Hey, I did some lines on someone's head not too long ago, just to let you know. Have you seen when they slide the blade and make a line on the side of the head? The straight blade without a guard? Yeah, straight, yeah. Um, I just seen that yesterday, last night. I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah, no, that sounds dangerous. Uh, it looked like it was from India, though. Was it on, like, Facebook or something? Yeah, I think it was on Instagram or something like that. Oh, yeah, that's a little, a little bit much. Okay, so if nobody has any questions, just let me make sure I have everyone on here still so that you can get your credit. Um, 
Claudia, Leslie is still here. Charlene, Ashley, Judith, Ruben, Alejandro, Nick, Carly, Mono, and Junior. Okay. That's everyone. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, I do have everyone. Okay, so you guys have a good weekend. Be safe over there. And um, we'll see you back Monday, 10 o'clock. Junior, it's 10 o'clock, okay? Not 11, 10. Can we come back? What? This whole time? Yes. Hold on. What did you say, Carly? Can we come back for theory? Yeah, one o'clock. Okay. One o'clock, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm thinking it's all the day's done. Sorry. See you guys at one. Forget it. I'll think of the other spill later. See you at one for theory. <laughs> okay, bye.